Hey guys, it's Tolga Sert. Welcome to the Red Vault. First of all, I wish you all a happy new year. Today we will check the Made in Japan King V Pro Dave Mustaine signature, aka KV1 Pro. I want to talk about the history of this guitar uh, before talking about the specs. This guitar can be the highest point of the Japanese made Jacksons, which produced in Kashingaki factory. The factory has been closed in 2012 after the tsunami related nuclear plant issues. Kashingaki was a well known factory uh, because of its production quality in the 90s. The myth goes as a significant series of guitars were better or really close to the US made Jacksons. Uh, with nearly a thousand dollar cheaper price. Actually, the guitars were so good uh, that created a, a decrease in the sales of the US made versions. Then Big Brother has decided to stop the production of this series uh, in Japan in 1995. This series was Professional Pro, which can be mixed up sometimes uh, with Professional or Lower series because there are lots of Professional or Pro in the name. Today I'm holding a 1994 King V Pro Day Mustang signature which later called as KV1 Pro. I purchased this guitar three years ago from its first owner uh, and I can easily say this guitar will remain with my kids not just because of its legacy also because it's perfection. But before talking about how it plays let's check the specs. We got a poplar body with maple neck. On the neck there is a beautiful ebony fingerboard with binding and mother of pearl inlays. The neck is a little bit thinner than my US made KV2 and my KVMG but uh, my Japan made KV5 FR and Demolition V or Demol V uh, has the same neck profile as well. We got a Jackson J80C on the bridge and Bill Lawrence XL500 on the neck and we got the pinnacle of the bridge for me. It's the fixed Kahler, Kahler 3200. Of course the purchase of this guitar was a no brainer for me, but I had some issues about the poplar body since the absence of my experience with this type of wood. Then the guitar has arrived. I put my 12 to 50 something strings on this guitar and tune it down to the C standard. It was like magic for me because I was already sold to the Seymour Duncan JB pickups on an older body configuration. But since I'm using those on C standard, I always had a problem uh, about the low end in my sound. Of course, when it comes to the playability and feeling, it was not a problem for me, you know, uh, with just a little touch of EQ, it was fixable. However, after just one power cord, KV1 Pro was enough to buy me. In my personal opinion, the character of the wood which makes people think it has too much mid or high end on the sound compared to the Alder or Mahogany also make it perfect for lower tunings. When it comes to the pickups, I'm not the luckiest one. When I restring this guitar, I put some pictures on the Facebook group of Jackson Charvel forum. Lots of people immediately replied with comments like, check the pickups, is it J90? I didn't even think about uh, messing up the fresh strings. I just removed it and checked the backside of the pickup. Sadly, this guitar has a J80C on the bridge but the 1993 versions of this guitar has J90, which is kind of rare item in these days. I was thinking about replacing the pickup with J90 if I could find one, but then I decided to keep it as original, keep it as it is since it's original till the smallest screw. Also, I don't think there's a massive difference between those pickups, but that's another video's topic if I could find a KV1 Pro with J90. Let's talk about the bridge before hear the sound of this beauty. Playing lead isn't my the strongest hand. I'm more of a upper two string first seven fret guy. However, I always prefer Floyd Rose because of the hand placement. I'm not really comfortable with hardtail or other fixed bridges. Since all of my guitars have official Floyd Rose or 1000 and 2000 series, I never had an issue about tuning, but changing the strings isn't the easiest even for the best. So when I met with Fixed Kahler, it was the best of both worlds for me. It's a bit different from Floyd Rose when it comes to shape, but due to my Kahler experiences from my old Kerry King signature, it wasn't an issue for me. Overall, with all respect to other brands, this guitar still the best Mustang signature on the earth. 
maybe a US made KV-1 can be superior to this guitar, but because of this guitar's legacy, I had to say maybe. Today, I'm using my Moer GE300 with Moer Baby Bomb solid state power amp, which goes directly to my Marshall MG412 cabinet. But you won't hear the sound of this rig. You will hear the GE300 with an IR loader on my computer because I don't want to see comments like why did you mic up a processor, a digital processor with solid state power amp and an entry level cabinet. You are right, but I still like to hear the sound that comes from the cabinet. So. <laughs> It's just perfect. Perfect. It was perfect. Perfect. Everything, down to the last minute details. And I know there's a Bill Lawrence on the neck, but I don't need it, really, I don't need it. I don't know, is it blasphemy, but... Also guys, please don't roast me on the comments, I can't remember all the tracks, uh, there's been a lot of time. Let's check the Bill Lawrence with the proper track. <laughs> Nasıldı lan bu? A few moments later. Sorry about the mistakes, but I think 
you get the feeling. to say a few words before closing up the video but I'm not sure I can express my feelings about this guitar it's a high-end Jackson with good craftsmanship but there's something about this guitar for me something makes me feel like a Megadeth fanboy teenager at my 27 after using and owning 40 50 different guitar Everything starts to feel desaturated. You start to think production wise. And in a world everyone sounds perfect. This kind of joy adds the human feeling to your performance. To the next video. See ya.